All right, Tim Legler joins us now here on SportsCenter. And, and Tim, you've been talking about this Miami Heat zone defense that they uh, displayed a couple games ago and why it was so effective for them at those intervals. And we just heard Rajon Rondo talk about it. What did you see from it tonight in terms of how the Lakers were able to handle it? Yeah, the Heat had great success against Boston. There's no question that that has a, had a huge factor in them winning that series. But this is a completely different animal. First of all, you've got size and skill that you could put in the middle of this. And I just thought their play construction and making a concerted effort to get the ball to the middle, to get the ball to the short baseline, the two areas on the floor that you absolutely have to get it to attack. You see the way they reverse side to the floor. When you do that, you end up getting two guys in the same place at the same time, which you had Hero and Butler do. And as a result, LeBron is able to hit AD on the cut here once again. Keep place to occupy, middle. Morris gets the ball right at the foul line. You're going to pinch in the wings. Wide open three uh, out on the perimeter once again for the Lakers attacking that zone. So I just thought that their approach to it was proper in that they understand if you get the ball into the interior of a zone, you are going to have to react and you're going to force multiple communications. When you do that, you're more likely to create some sort of a mistake I thought Lakers did a great job of it the entire game. Uh, they're clearly ready for it. Miami it has had great success using it throughout the season and in the postseason. But this team has too much. They've got too much size and athletic ability in the paint and along the baseline. And then their role players have been knocking down shots. That's the one thing Eric Sprosa was hoping wouldn't happen. But so far, the Lakers role players have been on point with their shooting, and there's just been relentless offensive pressure they've put on this team. Yeah, and scheme is one thing, but you got – you have Rajon Rondo and LeBron James, two guys with maybe the highest basketball IQ of their generation executing against that zone. That's a nightmare for an opposing team. There's no question about that. Let me ask you about the fact that AD was able to take advantage of a smaller Heat lineup, especially without Bam Adebayo out there. I mean, granted, he's one of the best players in the league. You give him any type of advantage, he's going to do work, and he did that tonight. Yeah, he's really their only big-time athlete up front. So you take him off the floor – if the zone is going to be even smaller than normal, and it's already four wing players basically in Bam Adebayo, and what happens in a zone defense, you don't have a specific guy to block out. So as a result, Anthony Davis, and this is where he really, I thought, just absolutely imposed his dominance on the game. He's getting these running starts from out on the perimeter with smaller players trying to do the best they can to get a body on him. But you can see how he just had three consecutive possessions where he completely overwhelmed Miami with his size, his length, and then his touch. And so we, even when Miami could force the Lakers into taking a three-point shot with a hand up, Anthony Davis was cleaning up all of those misses because you have smaller bodies trying to get uh, a check on a guy that's moving at them with a high rate of speed. It's just an impossible task for guys like Kendrick Nunn, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, even a guy like Jimmy Butler, giving up that kind of size. You're asking an awful lot, and Anthony Davis, I thought, in that third quarter, made sure that Miami was not going to make a significant run. So too much size, Mike, too much talent, and so far through two games, too much shooting. And that's the one thing that Miami thought they had an advantage in in this series. But the Lakers have done enough of that to free up all that inside room for Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I mean, they're down 2-0. You got two of the best players in the league on the other side, and you're shorthanded with Miami. If there's any way, Tim, that you could give some Miami Heat fans hope right now that they could win game three, what would have to happen in order for that to play out? Well, I think, first of all, Bam Adebayo has to play. They, they just don't have enough athletic ability on the front line if he's not on the floor. So that's the first thing. And I don't know if he's going to. There's, there's talk that he might be available on Sunday. Hopefully he will be. And then they're going to go look at their zone. I mean, I pointed out what the Lakers did well. But honestly, this was not the best effort that Miami has had defensively in that zone. I thought they had a ton of communication errors where they ended up with two guys on the basketball. That's a cardinal sin when you're playing a zone defense. The whole point is to make sure that you've got the interior sealed off and you've got guys matched up with shooters so you can close out quickly, get a hand up. If you end up with two guys on the ball, you're never going to catch up to it. And I thought there were just a number of possessions in this game that Eric Spolster can go to the tape and say, this isn't us. This isn't us that are best. Let's clean this up. You get Bam back on Sunday. This team, I think, scored enough tonight to stay confident. They've got to be much better defensively, and that's what Bam Adebayo and some good film work can do. So that's my best pitch for the Miami Heat fan base 
uh, to get back in this series on Sunday. Yeah, it's a scary scenario to say the least considering what we've seen here in the first two games. Only thing scarier, Tim Legler's house during Halloween. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Mike. You got it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.